Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Storytime. I'm Miss Jess, and this is Baby Time. This is the program where we've got our little guys on our laps. We call this a lap sit program. So, um, grown ups, this one really is for you. You're going to follow along with us. You're going to um, do the rhymes, the tickles, the bounces with Baby. And also, instead of, uh, well, as well as you listening and following along right now, Hopefully you'll hear these rhymes over and over. We do a whole lot of repetition. Um, you're going to be hearing the same ones today we've been hearing all summer. Um, and you can take those and absorb them and hopefully remember them and then repeat them again at another time with baby. So um, it will be beneficial to you and for baby to hear these repeated over and over. And then hopefully during playtime when you repeat these rhymes again, then baby will start to remember them also from story time and know what's coming. So. All these little rhymes, um, all these fun little things we do, they are fun, they're games, but that's also exactly how your baby learns. And um, these little bits of anticipation and they start to understand and hear and know what to expect um, is also um, increasing their, um, their awareness. It's building up the super highways running through their brain and all that fun stuff. So let's have some fun and help these little guys learn and grow while we're at it. All right, so we're gonna start by waking up our little bodies. We're going to say hello, words are up here. Say hello, we're going to start down at the bottom with their toes and we're going to move ourselves right up. Say hello to your toes, to your toes, to your toes. Say hello to your toes, hello toes. And we're going to come up next to your tummy. Say hello to that little tummy here. Say hello to your tummy, to your tummy, to your tummy. Say hello to your tummy, hello tummy. And there we are with a nice little tummy tum. And we're going to do a little head rub now. Say hello to your head, to your head, to your head. Say hello to your head. Hello, head. And now's the time where we wave to our friends. I know a lot of the little ones like learning how to wave, so if they're into that, then good morning. I'd love to have you wave to me. If you're not into it, um, if the babies aren't into it, grown-ups, you can wave and just demonstrate to them. Say hello to your friends, to your friends, to your friends. Say hello to your friends. Hello, friends. Oh, friends, I'm happy you're joining me. Um, Grown-ups, this is a good one where when we sing about their little parts, we can um, touch them. Uh, this is, again, a song we repeat every week, so we're working, working on kind of identifying the same things. But the more times you say the word and touch the thing, so touching their toes, touching their head, um, the more they'll start to understand that that's what that is. But especially if this is a song you've done over and over, if you have a baby who's getting a little bit older, um, this is a great thing that you can take the same song, which is of course based on another song, based on London Bridge, um, familiar tune, and just put in, again, put in new words. So you can change the words completely, make them your own, or you can do the same um, say hello rhyme, and maybe instead you'll do toys. So say hello to my ball, say hello to my car, um, and all these different things. And so you hold, you show, you touch baby that object while you say the word. And um, that's just part of, again, just part of their, uh, it's a game, it's a song, but it's also part of their learning. So um, kind of increasing their worldview and understanding what everything is around them. But let's move on to the fun part. Let's do a little bouncing here. Um, we've got baby, we're gonna bounce, bounce, bounce baby right on your knee. And then you're going to, at the end, we're going to fly away. So baby will fly through the air. And if you've got one who just loves this kind of rhyme, you can bounce them pretty big and you can fly them all the way up in the air. If you've got one who prefers a little more gentle movement, you can just kind of hold them tight, do a little rocking, and maybe just do a little bump up um, when it's time to fly through the air. Um, so again, you can completely modify this and um, customize it and make it to be whatever you and your baby are comfortable with. One, two, three. Baby's on my knee. Rooster crows and away he goes. And you can do that, as I said, super fast and exciting and make that a big bounce right up. Or you can do it nice and slow for baby to fly through the air. One, two, three. Baby's on my knee. Rooster crows and away he goes. All right. 
let's um, retire those for now. We're going to tell a story. So the next part of our baby time is um, where, of course, in the library we might share a book, but we are working on folk tales this summer, so I'm going to share a folk tale with you. I have saved a few of my favorite stories for these last couple of weeks, so the one I'm going to share with you today is one that I really enjoy. But when we're telling stories with babies, you want to keep it nice and short. Um, they do have short attention spans. Um, so if you have a favorite story that you like or a favorite book and you're not ready to share it with baby yet because you feel like it's too long, you can always take the book, flip through and look at the pictures while you tell an abbreviated version of it. Or you can just skip the book altogether and just talk. Just tell baby the story anyway. Um, again, at this age, at this development level, um, just talking, hearing language, um, hearing, hearing different vocabulary, um, hearing sentences and sentence structures, um, that's totally how babies are going to learn. So, so even if you feel like, you know what, books just aren't going to fly with these little guys, totally okay. Um, so I'm going to do a little storytelling today, probably a little longer than maybe the babies might be totally interested in, but you can take that and kind of model that and take any story that you know or a story that you want to make up or just a story that's your own, your own family, your own day. Um, you and baby tell a story about yourselves. Um, so yeah, so just, just a little model of telling stories. So our folk tale, we are going to tell the story of a folk tale, and our folk tale today is the giant turnip. There is a farmer, and she planted all her fields in the spring. She's got everything all lined up and planted, and she waters it and weeds it, and she takes such good care of her garden all through the summer and her plants are thriving and they're growing and through the summer she might go out and maybe pick some lettuce or she's got some beans that she picks and she has them um, with her dinner. Well, come fall when it's time to harvest some of the root vegetables, she goes out to find her turnips and she pulls them up and pulls them up and she sets them aside until she comes to a really big turnip. Not just a big turnip, a giant turnip. And she says, oh my goodness, this is amazing, I've never grown a turnip this big before. And she goes to pluck it out of the ground. Well, it is so big that she cannot get it out of the ground. So she pulls really hard and it doesn't come out of the ground. She takes a good hold with two hands and she pulls just as hard as she can and it won't come out of the ground. She says, mm, I'm gonna need some help with this. So she goes back to her barn and she says to horse, horse, would you help me please? I need help getting this turnip out of the ground. I'm not strong enough to do it by myself. And horse says, sure, let's see what we can do. And horse and the farmer go back out to the fields and the farmer grabs onto that turnip and the horse takes a little bite with her teeth and they try to pull. And so there's the farmer and the horse and they pull as hard as they can and it just won't come out. They need help. So they go back to the barn and they ask the goat to help. And the goat and the horse and the farmer go back out to the field and the farmer grabs on and the horse grabs on and the goat grabs on and they all pull and it won't come out it's just stuck too tight it's such a big turnip it won't come up so they ask the dog to come help and dog comes running out and says sure sure i'll help and so the farmer and the horse and the goat and the dog all lined up and they all help and they all pull and it won't come out and there's a little mouse going by and he says, oh, do you need some help with that? And they say, you're awfully small. I guess you can help. Uh, so the farmer and the horse and the goat and the dog and now the little mouse, they all line up and they all pull as hard as they can. And they pull and they pull and pop. Oh, it pops right out. And that turnip pops up out of the ground and it is all perfect just the most perfect, gigantic turnip anyone has ever seen. And the farmer brings it back and she makes up the most delicious stew and she shares it with everybody because she could not have done that without help from her friends. Cooperation and teamwork always pay off. Now we've got this version from the library. This is the giant cabbage. So uh, a little bit different version. Um, we've got a, a moose here as the farmer and he grows a giant cabbage and he needs his friends to come help. 
So we've got some different wildlife creatures instead of the um, farmyard creatures that we talked about in our story. Um, but there is this variation and there are some others at the library. So if you are interested in that, of course, check out our catalog, see which one is interesting to you, and um, then you can pop on over and pick that up from the library. And of course, if folk tales aren't what you're looking for, there are board books and picture books and bedtime stories, um, concept books with colors and shapes, all sorts of other options. So um, something for everyone, check out our catalog and then swing on by to uh, just come and pick up your books. Alrighty. Let's get these little guys bouncing again. It is good for them to hear stories, but that's not always what engages them so much, right? So we're going to do a nice little bouncy rhyme again. If your little one loves bounces, go ahead and give them a good vigorous bounce. This is good for those little belly giggles. We're going to do a little trip trot here. We've done this uh, for quite a few weeks in a row, so hopefully you guys know the words. If not, just watch me and follow along. Trip trot to Boston, trip trot to Dover. Watch out, baby, or you might fall over. Oh no, baby fell over. Trip trot to Boston, trip trot to Lynn. Watch out, baby, or you might fall in. Boom. So you can scoot yourself up to the edge of your chair, the edge of your couch, and have your knees, um, have baby on your knees, and then you can just boop, slide that open and have baby pop down. Um, or you can, um, if you're sitting on the floor, you can pop your knees up, make a little mountain out of your knees, and then uh, have baby bounce on top and pop baby down that way. So um, hopefully this is one that baby loves. A lot of belly giggles usually out of this one. If you've got a little one again, you can always modify it. Just bounce them right here in your arms. Let's do that again. Trip trot to Boston, trip trot to Dover. Watch out, baby, or you might fall over. Trip trot to Boston, trip trot to Lynn. Watch out, baby, or you might fall in. Oh no, must have been a big pothole. All right, we're gonna go around the world. We're gonna catch a bear. Are you guys ready to catch that bear? We're probably gonna find it in some tickles here in the middle. So we're gonna start with a big circle. We're gonna go round and round, baby. And then we're gonna narrow that down as we come in for the tickle. Around the world, around the world, to catch a great big bear. Where will we catch him? Right in there. And you've got a nice little target for a tickle. You can tickle anywhere. You can tickle under the arms, tickle under the chin, tickle right in the belly. Maybe mix it up next time you do the rhyme so that, again, baby's starting that anticipation, getting that anticipation, but then you surprise them. Around the world, around the world, to catch a great big bear. Where will we find him? Right in there! And give a nice little tickle. Again, um, do this at whatever kind of intensity that you and your baby like. So if you've got a baby who loves these kind of vigorous movements, you can give them a great big tickle. Get them, get them all riled up here. All right, now this is one that I love, but um, it can be a little tricky. So again, you're definitely, this is one you can skip if you're not comfortable with it or if it just doesn't work out. If you are on the floor, this is a good one because we're going to be rolling baby over and over. Um, but if you have a big flat surface, maybe a big bed, that's great. Um, but if you don't feel like you have a space that's comfortable or safe for this, you can skip that too. Um, of course, you can always just roll baby back and forth too. Do a little rolling this way. So um, another alternative. And if you really just aren't, if that's not going to work, um, you still want to do this, you can just roll your arms. So we're just going to roll it, roll it, roll it. So you can just do roll your arms. And if baby's big enough, you can start helping them roll their arms for this one. All right. So let's make some raisin bread. You roll it. You roll it. You roll it. You roll it. And then you put the raisins in and you poke, 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 poke those raisins all in your little raisin bread, all in that squishy, doughy little belly of theirs. Let's do that one again. We'll roll our arms this time. I'll show you guys how we, how we do it that way. You roll it, you roll it, you roll it, you roll it. And then you put the raisins in and you can do all those same little poke, 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 pokes, get all those raisins in. Um, and just do that little more um, different, that gentler motion of rolling instead. All right, let's have a seat, Freddy Bear. It's time for more little stories, but
but these are just the right bite-sized baby stories. Of course, I mean our nursery rhymes. Nursery rhymes from Mother Goose. My illustrated copy here by Scott Gustafson. And today we have got the story of Little Miss Muffet. Here she is, Little Miss Muffet. All right. Now, again, um, collections of nursery rhymes are a lot of fun, so if you guys are looking to come and pick up some books at the library, you might want to look into a nursery rhyme collection. Um, not only do they give you some of these great short little stories um, that you can share with baby, but also they have, uh, usually when you get them in a picture, um, sorry, in a book collection, you've got these great pictures that you can share with baby too. So instead of reading the words, you could just talk about the pictures in that little picture walk style that we've talked about so many times. So, Little Miss Muffet. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider and sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. Oh my! I wonder if that spider was friends with the Itsy Bitsy spider. What do you think? Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider and sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. She was not too interested in hanging out with that guy, huh? Now here's another one you might not be familiar with. This one's also got a couple of bugs. The fly and the bumblebee. This one is called Fiddle Dee Dee. Fiddle Dee Dee, Fiddle Dee Dee, the fly shall marry the bumblebee. They went to the church and married was she. The fly has married the bumblebee. Totally silly, total nonsense great rhythm, great rhyming. So um, as with most of these nursery rhymes, they don't necessarily mean anything, but they are great little, um, they're great little ditties for the kiddos to hear. So fiddle dee dee, fiddle dee dee, the fly shall marry the bumblebee. They went to the church and married was she. The fly has married the bumblebee. Short and sweet. And now it's time for us to wrap up. So we're gonna take these scarves, we're gonna floop, floop, fly them around, wave them through the air. Babies love to see these flying colors. If you've got a scarf, awesome. If you haven't got a scarf, um, you can substitute with any other kind of colorful piece of fabric. Um, a little washcloth might do, a little burp cloth might do, uh, maybe even a pillowcase. If you are using something that's a little bit bigger, um, then it might be great for some peekaboo, but it might not be so great for our little jack-in-the-box rhyme. So you might want to substitute and find a squishy little toy or something like that instead. All right, so we're gonna tuck, tuck, tuck that scarf, hide it away in your hand, and we're gonna do jack-in-the-box. Jack-in-the-box sits so still. Will he come out? Yes, he will. And you can pop that right up in the air. Um, this, again, is another one, especially as baby gets a little bit older. If you've got um, maybe a favorite toy, um, I know a lot of baby toys are very big, but if you do have a favorite toy, something that's small, something you might be able to tuck away in your hands, um, maybe you can do this kind of rhyme. And if it's something that you don't want to throw, you can always just reveal that at the end. Um, so again, if baby has something favorite that they, that they love to play with, then they see you hide it. It's that, uh, it's that good idea of object permanence, but it's also that idea of, ooh, I think there's something in there, I think there's something I like, and then you pop it out. Um, whether you throw it or just hold it, um, that is something that baby can look forward to. So, once again, another, um, another way of throwing a little anticipation in there. That kind of surprise always sparks baby's brain. Jack in the box sits so still. Will he come out? Yes, he will. Oh my goodness, we bopped Freddy Bear right in the nose with that one. There we go, we'll do a little peekaboo, make up for that. All right, and it is time for goodbye, which we do with our good night rhyme. So as I've said many, many times, um, this is a fun one maybe that you could do. It is a nice, calm and gentle one, so it's one maybe you can do at the end of the night. Um, add it into your bedtime routine, do a little, a little face cover. Maybe if you're lucky while your hands are over baby's face, she'll just fall right to sleep. <laughs> Probably not, but that's okay. So we're gonna cover up while we say the first two lines, open to say hello, and close it again to say goodbye. We say goodnight when day is done. Hello, moon, and goodnight, sun. 
that you can cover up. And again, you can do this one with the scarf. So if that's something that while you guys are playing with the scarf, maybe not for bedtime, but for a playtime rhyme, that can work very well. We say good night when day is done. Hello, moon, and goodbye, sun. Leave that on for a nice little peekaboo. All right, friends, well, thank you all so much for joining me one more time. Uh, we will be back next week with some more songs and rhymes and bounces. A lot of the familiar ones that we did today we will repeat again next week. Um, but we will explore a new fairy tale, and hopefully you guys have, um, will go and grab some books, or maybe you have some books that you've gotten from the library recently, and you can extend your story time by exploring those together with Baby. Whatever you do, have fun. We'll see you next week. Bye.